Hi, welcome to Artistic Adventures. I'm Holly from BB Library, and today we're going to be talking about Alexander Calder, who um, is an American uh, sculpt uh, sculptor, artist, painter, did all kinds of things. He came from a family of artists, but his parents and his grandparents, all of them, they were painters or sculptors or different things. But interesting enough is that they kind of, like other people, encouraged uh, uh, Alexander, or Sandy as he was called, Sandy, to not become an artist. And he was good with that. He w really wanted to go off and study to be a mechanical engineer. And so that's what he did. But the time when he was a student, he also took some evening classes in art. And among uh, some of the teachers he had, one we bumped into, uh, Thomas Hart Benton, who uh, um, that we talked about last week with Jackson Pollock. Uh, he was Pollock's teacher, also was a teacher to, to Calder. So um, that's, I think we'll look at our book first and then we'll find out some more about him. All right, today's book is called Sandy's Circus, a story about Alexander Calder. It's written by Tanya Lee Stone and illustrated by Boris Kulikov, and uh, it is published by Viking. Once there was an artist named Alexander Calder, only he didn't call himself Alexander, and he didn't call the things he made art. Everyone called him Sandy. He'd been making his objects since he was a kid. Sandy's mother was a painter. His father was a sculptor. Even though they moved from Pennsylvania to Arizona to California to New York and back to California, his parents always made sure that Sandy had a workshop and tools. He made his friends toys and jewelry from scraps of wood and feathers and wire that he would pick up off the street. Sandy built his sister Peggy a castle for her doll, complete with a moat. He and Peggy made toy animals and played circus in the workshop. Even though Sandy loved creating things, he didn't always want to be an artist. He went to college and learned more about making things by studying to be an engineer. Sandy had different jobs, but never really liked any of them. Then he worked as a fireman in the boiler room of a ship. One night, he was sleeping up on deck, sailing between San Francisco and New York. When he woke, he was awestruck. On one side of the ship was a fiery red sunrise. On the other, the full moon rose like a silver coin. The sight made Sandy want to go to art school, and he did. Artists needed to work. A newspaper hired Sandy to draw the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. For two weeks, day and night, he went to the stadium drawing as many different parts of the circus as he could. He loved sketching the elephants, the flying trapeze, the lion tamer, and the dancers. Sandy sat in different parts of the theater to see from up high, down low, and off to the side. The next year, 1926, he decided to go to Paris. Why Paris? Because that city was alive with art. And Sandy said, in Paris, Paris, it's a compliment to be called crazy. Sandy rode through the streets of Paris on his orange bicycle. He carried a roll of wire around his shoulder and a pair of pliers in his pocket. When, Pandy, when Sandy bumped into a friend, out came the wire and the pliers. He would twist and bend and curl while he chatted. And before they said adieu, Sandy would give his friend a gift. Voila, a small portrait of the person made of wire. One day, Sandy made a little wire lion. He built a colorful cage for the lion. Of course, since the lion was a wild animal, it needed a tamer. So Sandy made him too. And then he made a high wire walker and high wire for them to walk on and a safety net in case they should fall. And a flying trapeze and a red stage. Sandy started to see a whole circus come to life 
before his eyes. Then he really got going. His huge hands worked with tiny pieces of wire, cork, cloth, buttons, yarn, string, leather, paper, and bits of wood. He twisted and shaped and curled and cut and curved until Sandy was ready to put on a big cir top circus show. His circus filled two suitcases. Click, click, Sandy set up the stage with his animals and performers wherever and whenever he could. He went back and forth, back and forth, from Paris to New York, those suitcases always along for the ride. During one stay in New York, Sandy made more animals and acrobats. His secret, secret circus sorry, grew to fill five suitcases. When it was showtime, out came the suitcases. Click, 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 click. A friend wound up a gramophone to start the music. Sandy boomed a greeting to his audience in the voice of his wire ringmaster, Monsieur Loyal, announcing the performance was about to begin. On his knees, this bear of a man worked the springs and strings and lovers of his clever creations, making them leap, run, and dance. Hear the whistle blow. Horns blared. See the flying Flippolinis flip. The lions roar. The lion tamer tames. Seals bark, tossing a ball from nose to nose. Rico Lott, the strong man, bends his toes and raises a huge barbell high above his head, showing off for his beloved bearded lady. Horses gallop, birds flutter, dogs dance on whirly, twirly legs. Cattivo the clown plays tricks on his fellow performers. He dangerously distracts the axe thrower just as he hurls his axe at the wire girl. Oh no, injury under the big top, but never fear. Help is on the way. Sirens wail. Two wire rescue workers race in to carry the girl off on a teeny tiny stretcher. Sometimes the show went on for hours. There were chariot races and bucking broncos, a belly dancer, camel, and kangaroo. Sandy crawled around on his hands and knees, arranging the wire animals and circus folk, settling them in motion, setting them in motion to perform for the crowd. After the grand finale, he brought them back for a bow. Encore! Encore! The crowd laughed and clapped and cheered for more. Word, spell throughout Paris, word spread throughout Paris and New York. Everyone wanted to see Sandy's circus. They loved how full of joy and fun it was. How they loved Sandy's work that it was always in motion. People said, he has discovered in playing a new world. His art has the force of the ocean. Sandy delighted in crafting things that moved. He made a new kind of art, hanging his shapes up, connecting pieces to each other with wire and letting the air drift and spin them into motion. In doing so, he turned ordinary objects into extraordinary art and invented the very first mobiles. And it all started with Sandy's magical, movable circus. And here we go, and here's this last picture. There's a picture of him in his workshop. Okay, we saw at the very end of the book what uh, Calder was really known for, and that was his mobiles. But I have a few pictures to show you. First of all, I have one of, of a circus of his. So I'm putting that up. When he was in Paris, probably the thing that influenced him the most was meeting the Dutch artist uh, Piet Mondrian. And he was known for um, his very geometric drawings that were in like primary colors. And here is, here's one of his. And um, almost everything of his is the same, you know, kind of boxes, boxes, sorry, my cat, boxes of, of color. And uh, when he was there, um, he was very taken with Mondrian Studio, which had five sides to begin with and white walls and black furniture. Everything was very spare and and in 
black, white, and primary colors. And Mondrian really, in fact, everyone who met um, Sandy really liked him. They said that he was just this really nice guy who was enthusiastic and very friendly. Well, he told him that he really should think about doing all of his work in primary colors. And he thought about that, and his work changed quite a bit um, with that. He did start working mainly in, in primary colors. Um, he also decided that, that he wanted to do his work um, abstract rather than being representational. So you, you know, no more, they like, not like the circus that you could see that was the clown and that was the weightlifter. Here we're talking shapes and um, shapes and colors. But he's known mainly for his mobiles. And we just think of them, in fact, probably one of the worst bits of piece of art that you had when you were born. I bet most families hang a mobile over the baby's crib, something that the babies can look up and they can reach up to and see. Well, um, that whole thing started with him. The name came from another artist that he met in Paris by the name of Marcel Duchamp. He saw them, and for him, the word mobile meant movement because he liked the way that, that his work could be still, but in a slight breeze, everything would move. And so I've got some pictures of his mobiles. He had some of them that, that hang, and here's one that hangs. And here's another one that is, um, it's set on the ground with pieces that hang over that can move. And one thing he did a lot of um, I, that I really thought are kind of cool is he did these fish mobiles. They're a little bit different, you know, in that what's hanging is hanging from inside the scales of the fish. If you look closely at this, you'll see little bits of sea glass and parts of machinery and, and all kinds of things like that. In fact, I came across one quote about when he was, he made jewelry his whole life. He, he made jewelry for his sister. As they talked about him making a castle, he also made a lot of jewelry. All his life he did that. But um, he said that when he was making jewelry for his sister, he went through and collected the very best pieces out of the garbage. And a lot of his stuff looks like, like he used some found things along with it. Um, I have a painting uh, next of his. It's something called Spring Carnival. And you recognize the colors? Because for after he met Mondrian, after that, pretty much everything he did were in those primary colors. And... Um, the next one is one that you can go and see local. In a courtyard at MIT is um, a huge sculpture called Le Grand Voile, and it just means the big sail. And it was kind of the inspiration were you know the, the boats off off on the river outside of Boston. So there's that. Um, and this last picture I have for you is a picture of Calder actually in his workshop. Look at the size. It doesn't really look like an art workshop. It looks more like somebody who is an engineer. It has a lot of, lot of tools and, and things around. So uh, he's pretty cool. Uh, just a couple other kind of cool things I found out about him. One of which is during World War II, he um, went and applied or went, went in, in to be recruited into the Marine Corps. He was very interested in becoming... Um, being coming a, a camouflage artist, of which they use to you know, for planes or, or vehicles or even uniforms, they had artists who would create camouflage patterns to to try to keep um, you know all of the our equipment and our, our men and and women keep them kind of disguised during the war. But he was rejected, and that was something he was pretty sad about. Uh, and the other thing is he one of the other job he was hired to do was to paint three huge jet planes for Braniff Air, as well as BMW hired him to um, paint a sports car uh, in his own style. So he's, he's, he's cool. But well, today, what I thought we could, we could make, there's, we could go all sorts of different ways. One, one way we could go is to um, use some wire, of which I've got, um, I thought the easiest I found to work with that you really don't need pliers is this is just florist wire that I, I picked up. Uh, I, think I, I think I got this at Walmart, but I've seen it at Michael's or different places. Just florist wire. It's very, very easy. You can, oh, my shirt swings ease. It's super easy to bend and you can do all kinds of things. You could make your own little circus and um, use 
different sorts of things for that. Um, that's not what I chose to do, but I thought it would be fun. Um, I found a cork I just wrapped in in some paper, and and this would make great legs. And uh, what else did I pull over here? I've got some. I've got a, a whole box of things here. I looked around the house, and I found that just like Sandy used found things, I found some buttons. Um, in fact, here is an odd button. I'm not sure which way that goes. There's one side there, and there's the other. I thought that would make for something small, a really kind of cool hat. Um, I, I thought I liked the, the texture of this elastic, so I thought that could be something fun to build with. So you could have some fun with, uh, if you don't have a cork, just roll a piece of paper like I did with that and um, make, your, make your own little circus. Um, but I wanted to work with the mobiles because I, I just think they're so much fun. I started working on one and I thought that I could work on it with you and what I what I used I used colored papers and I did choose uh, you know the colored the colored papers that he did in the primary colors and uh, blue which I've used up <laughs> you'll see what I did with it blue and but I found that in making a mobile you're dealing with weight you you want something to balance then this side has to balance that side paper is is so um, it's so light that it's it's hard to you know try to get interesting things to balance off. So what I what I used is I went around and I found some coins. You know, I actually found some just coins and little little bits of little bits of metal. Um, in fact, um, I was I was I was going to use like the little batteries that were. <laughs> no longer working but i found that because because those are heavy that just paper or painted you know paper paint was um not heavy enough to um do it so i just went through the mail i grabbed some thicker paper from there um i, I took i found some old um you know, folders that were which we were going to throw away and, and here's just a something I, I took off cat, uh, catalog junk mail. So I did that and used that, and I'll show you how I did that. But I started working, I didn't finish. This, I decided to make mine Calder-esque. So I did start with, um, and I found out that my stuff, my stuff actually balances. I'm too, you can't see from here. I found out that it balances pretty well. I, I have not finished it, I just started. Um, I, and I, the goal of doing this is to make sure that you've got heavy things and lighter things. So this, inside this, you really can't see, but I have got, I think I've got eight coins taped inside, and I'll show you how I did that. And then over here, these are just, I've got, I use some clothespins to just hold them in place because I want them to stay in place. So this one, I put just a dab of glue on, so this one is, is, is set in place. This side is not yet. So I'm going to show you how I made, made these and, um, and then I'll, I'll work on mine too. So I'm just gonna push the camera down a bit so you can see the table. And so I have, I use glue stick to, to make it, but um, I, did, I did find that there were a couple things I had to go with them with the heavy duty glue. All right, so, Jasmine. Okay, well, one other thing I did want to do, I've got, I've got blue and I have, I have red. I wanted to have, uh, I know that when I take the, um, the moment that I, I take the clothespins off my blue side, it's not going to be um, heavy enough to weigh down the other. So I thought I would, would make a couple more things in yellow that hang down between them longer. So um, I'm just gonna create, I made my shape look kind, kind of like a teardrop. And I think I might do that again. I want two of them, so I'm gonna save myself. Um, I'm gonna save myself cutting two and trying to make them the same. I'm just gonna cut them both together. So I'm just gonna cut another. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger than the one that, than the blue one, but not as large as the red. All right. So there are my, my the last two pieces to my, and is it? Oh, I actually need to do four of these because, um, yeah, I need to do two more. So it looks like I am going to have to trace. So I'm just going to trace around. So for each piece, I needed two. 
But you know, you can make up your own way. This is just the way I did. I, I didn't read anything about how anybody else made mobiles. I'm just making it as, up as I'm going, and um, which is fun. It's, it feels like, like, I'm, like I'm creating rather than just copying, even though I, I am taking his colors and, and his sort of style. All right, so now I've got my four pieces. But because I told you I had trouble, I needed something that was, um, I needed um, something a little bit thicker. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this. This is just, just like a piece of junk mail we got that is got a little bit thicker, kind of cardstock sort of texture. So I'm just gonna cut out. Do it over here, and I can do two at the same time. Right there. All right. All right. So I'm just gonna fold this so that I can cut out two. See, at the same time. There we go. There were other things you could do too for uh, Sandy Calder. We saw the one painting he did. And that looked so much like um, like his mobiles. You could create your own mobile just using markers on some white paper. All right. So the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't want these to be very heavy at all because of, um, I know that um, the other ones are, are just about balanced. So I'm just taking a penny, I want an American penny. I'm just gonna put a, a penny right there. And then I'm going to glue, I should, I want to glue on these yellow pieces over the, on it. So I did find that I've gotta make sure you gotta get, got to get the edges. So I'm just gonna take and And flip it over so I've got my penny on the inside and just gonna glue them yellow paper on the outside. There we go. And because I'm not very neat, my last step is always to take my scissors. In fact, you can see I, I'm I'm not not very precise, but I can make it look precise by going and clipping around to make sure that. I can't see the brown paper going through. There we go, so I have one done, there's one. And I'm gonna do the same with the, with the other. There's my, my cardboardy stuff. So this is just, just a little bit thicker. And I'm gonna to try to, I'm gluing my penny right there in the, in the middle. I've got, there we go. And we'll take, this on. But be creative. Come up with, you know, you could even, rather than making things like this, you could even find some of your toys or little things you have around the house and use those to hang from your mobile. That would be interesting. You know, the trick, trick, in fact, it's a good thing that Sandy was, um, was an engineer because he had that could figure that all out how the um the weight and and trying to figure out to get everything nice and balanced all right and here's my other one and again not very precise i can see some of them the brown so i'm just gonna just gonna go around and um and make sure the edges are all nice and neat. There we go. There. Thank you for description. All right, so there I've got, I've got my, my two more pieces. I just use a paper punch, but you could do anything you wanted. I thought about just using a, like a sewing needle and, and doing that, but I found, found a paper punch. I'm gonna neaten this up some more. There we go. All right, now, 
this is the piece I'm working on. I'm gonna leave the other piece there. So this, this is the one that I've been gonna work on. First of all, the one thing I'm gonna do with this is I have decided that I, I came up with how I wanted these hanging. Um, and this is how I want them hanging, is, is at this level. So one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna take off, I'm gonna take off these clips and I'm gonna just put a little bit of glue on that, each of them. So they don't slide around. So I'm just putting some glue on the, um, on the string of each of those. I'm gonna leave these two just to dry and make sure I've got them exactly where I want them. And it looks like just where I want them and I'm gonna cut off these, these yeah, the rest of the pieces here too. So I don't have, they're not as long. And I just, um, I used some thread. I couldn't find any string. I was gonna use string, but I couldn't find any. So. There we go. So I'm gonna leave this, oops, there's another clip there. Right. I'm gonna put this over here to dry just for a minute while I, um, while I get my other ones ready. All right. All right, so I've got some, I've got some thread. And I think I would like these to be longer than, uh, in fact, quite long, longer than, and um, I don't know, do I, I can't decide, do I want them at the same length or do I want them at different lengths? I think I'll let different lengths, will just be kind of a little bit random. So, I'm gonna take and just put my thread through the hole I made. And again, you could do this by using a, like a sewing needle and kind of sewing it through, or you could just poke a hole which, with a pair of scissors, which is what I would usually do. Okay. There we go. Make sure I got that nice and tight. All right, there's one done. Put that over here. Put this one through. I think later I'm gonna try, I was, I was considering trying to make some little figures with the wire. Something I've, ne I've never tried to play with, but um, I've used the, used the wire for all sorts of things like it, so that seems, seems like a good idea. Yeah, every book, I read a few things about um, about Sandy Calder, and the one thing that everybody said about him was just um, how much fun he was, you know, what good spirits he had. So, there we go. Here's mine. Here's the ones I have. So I would like to have one. I'd like to have one down here, hanging, hanging down quite long. So I'm gonna, just going to hang this. Let's see if I can get this around on my, my stand. There we go. All right, so I'm going to tie tie this one right here. I know you can't see because I'm... Tie that right there, and I am going to put... I am going to put on it a little drop of glue to keep it in place so that doesn't kind of wobble around. And I'll tie the other one and then I'll pull it away so you can see. And then I'm then I'm gonna try and see about the weight. See if this see if this works. Because that's the challenge is when you do mobiles. I've done them um, before using oops I didn't tie right 
using um, three, four, or five hangers, and it's really fun. But paper paper works pretty good if you don't. But um, oops, this is slipping. Just put this tied. You see, big big thing in my hands. There we go. So now, let's see what. Turn this so you can see. All right, so now I've got two long ones hanging down, and I want to put some glue on this one. I just, that one, and I want to put some glue up here on this one, too. Put some glue back there. All right, so now, now for the, um, now for the question. Let's see about the balance. All right, there we go. Okay, so this red one, I put a lot, lot of weight in. And so I was gonna hang this on this side. And, oops. I wanna see, you know what? This is really strange because I actually, I'm gonna back back up the camera more. Because I actually did a good job. I can't believe it. Um, I've got it so it actually, except everything is now, of course, is all getting but I, I have to admit, uh, I, I've got, I'm holding it right here in the middle. These are actually, they're actually pretty balanced. So, although, you know, it was, even though this is not, um, I thought I'd have more work and than I did there. But, so try, try yourself. See what you can do. You know, I, um, I just used things I found around the house. I didn't go out and buy anything for it. You know, look through your junk mail. You might find cool stuff. Be like Calder. Go see, find the prettiest things in your garbage to use, to hang. I, I've seen really great things. Um, in fact, I thought I had some shells that, um, that we got out of the beach and some sea glass. I thought of trying that, but I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to get the weight perfect. That's why I went with the, the coins inside the paper, because I knew I could kind of balance, balance those off. And um, I kind of, I, I kind of weighed them in my hands a little bit to see how many I really needed. So, all right, well, um, have fun, you know, draw in, you know, just in honor of Alexander Calder, draw in, in red, blue, yellow, white, black, or make a mobile or play around with some wire and make yourself, um, if you don't like circuses, make yourself um, a little, you know, a little fairy house or make yourself uh, superheroes made out of wire, anything that you'd like to do. Sorry, so next week we'll be looking at another American, kind of an American role here. Uh, her name is uh, Georgia O'Keefe, and we did bump into her when, um, when I did um, Yayoi Kusama, who um, wrote to, at that time, the most famous, in fact, the two of them still, most famous women artists around. She wrote to Georgia O'Keefe, and who came and visited her in her apartment and introduced her to her own um, art gallery uh, agent and helped her get her start. O'Keefe is amazing. And in the case next week, we're not going to be looking at big, the big picture. We're going to be looking at the little picture because what she's known for is drawing things up close and only portions of it. And that's really fun. So we'll be drawing next week. And uh, I, I love her work so much. All right. Well, thank you very much. Bye.